Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is defining concrete and timber cross sections in R section one and design in RFM six. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Luba Software. For instance, the German and English webinars, newsletters, technical content of the website and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will answer your questions. The presentation will be done by my colleague Sonja von Blo. She is responsible for customer support and the main responsible person for the development of the add-on aluminum design and the cross-section program program R section. Okay, then I say some words how you can ask questions. First, I switch off my webcam that you can see the full screen. You can press that button with the question mark and then enter your question here. Press send and I will receive your question and I will answer of the question. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. Okay, that's at the moment all from my side. I hand over to Sonja. Sonja, it's your turn. I would also like to welcome you to today's webinar. The topic of this webinar is the modeling of massive cross sections in our section and the design in the RFM design add-ons. First, I will show the modeling of reinforced concrete cross section and the design in the concrete design and on, then I will create a user-defined timber cross-section and design it in the timber design and on. First, I would like to show you how you can reinforce library cross-sections from RFM. Currently, only the common library cross-sections are provided with a reinforcement layout and can be reinforced directly in RFM. Library cross-sections without a reinforcement layout or user-defined cross-sections can, however, be reinforced in our section and then designed in concrete design. First, I create a new file and I name it concrete column. Then I activate the concrete design add-on. I then define the material for the concrete. And here I choose a C3037. And I need an additional material for the concrete reinforcement. And here I choose B550 The concrete column should have a hexagonal cross section. I choose this from the library. I define a length of 500 millimeter and then I can create the column. The column should have a height of five meter. Then I define a support on the bottom. This should be a hinged support. And I define an additional support on the top. And in lowest case self weight, I define an additional load of 800 kilonewton on the top. If I open now here uh, the edit uh, member uh, dialog, I can see uh, that uh, the tabs for defining the design properties are not displayed. This is because uh, the hexagonal profile does not have a reinforcement layout and it's therefore not possible to define the reinforcement directly in RFEM. If I go to the table 
concrete design and here to the section I can see that the cross section is also marked as invalid in red. The reinforcement definition is uh, possible in our section and I can open our section here in the edit section dialog if I click here on this button. In the base data dialog, the concrete reinforcement checkbox is already activated, which allows the reinforcement to be entered in our section. In the reinforcement settings tab, I make the settings for the concrete cover. I leave the setting at uh, 30 millimeter, so I click on OK. In the graphic, uh, the concrete cover is indicated by the green uh, dashed line. First, I define the steer up. You can only position steer ups at uh, cover points. Cover points are the blue points on the green cover line. You can also create additional cover points on the cover line and use these for the steer up arrangement. However, I do not need any further cover points, so I can now enter the steer up. To do this, I open the corresponding dialog. Um, and in this dialog, I first select the cover points. To close the steer up, the initial cover point must be selected again at the end. Then I have to define the uh, peri parameters of the steer up. Here I define a steer up uh, diameter of 8 mm and I define here the material B550. Then I define the longitudinal reinforcement. To do this, I create a new bar. And uh, in this dialog, um, many definition types um, are included. Um, it's uh, possible to define a single um, bars or it's also possible to define several bars in one step with this um, with these uh, multi definition types. I uh, first want to define uh, bars in the corner corners so I select the definition type a single point. Uh, I also have to uh, specify in which reinforcement layer the bar should be placed. The concrete design on summarizes the same reinforcement diameters as one position. For each position, you can then specify the position in the span in the concrete design on. If not all reinforcement bars should have the same position in the span, they should be placed in different reinforcement layers. The reinforcement bars should all have the same position in the span. So, um, that they are defined in the same reinforcement layer and that's here uh, the reinforcement layer number one. I define a bar diameter about uh, 16 millimeter. Then I have to specify the position of the reinforcement bar. For this I uh, use the select function and the re reinforcement snap points on the outer contour uh, can be uh, snapped um, and it's also possible that all other points that are defined in the file can be snapped. I choose here uh, this point and then I click on apply and next to create the next bar in the corner. I will do this for all corners.
to enter additional reinforcement bars, I select here the definition type multivariable. Two more bars are to be arranged. That's therefore I um, define here two. And um, I define a distance between the bars of uh, 75 millimeters and a distance from the beginning of 75.4 millimeter. Then I um, have to um, define the start and end point. And I will do this for all sides. The input is now complete, so I accept my input with a uh, save and return. And then I check the edit member dialog. The edit member dialog has now been expanded to include the concrete design property tabs. The concrete cover defined in our section as output in the concrete cover tab. If changes are required, these must be made in our section directly. The defined stirrups can be found in the shear reinforcement tab. You can then define the steer up distance uh, here and the span location uh, for each a span. Uh, you also have the option of creating uh, multiple spans um, with uh, this box here. Uh, however, uh, changes on the bar uh, diameter uh, or steer diameter and uh, geometry can only be made in R section. The longitude Longitudinal reinforcement is listed in the longitudinal reinforcement tab. The reinforcement bars all have the same diameter and are stored in the same reinforcement layer in our section. Therefore, only one item is listed. You can influence the position of the span uh, for this. If you want to specify a, differ a different uh, position, um, you can here uh, define or you can make here your settings. Um, if you want to specify a different position for individual bars, you have to create these bars in a different reinforcement layer in our section, as I mentioned before. I would like to show you uh, this now. Uh, to do this, I open uh, the cross section in R section. And I want to um, put all the bars in the corner in one, in another reinforcement layer. I create here a second reinforcement layer. And now, uh, these bars are in the second reinforcement layer. I click on save and return. And now you can see uh, that you have now two items and first items are um, the bars in the first uh, reinforcement layer and the second item are the bars that are here shown in a yellow color um, that are defined in the second reinforcement layer.
I go now to the uh, design uh, situations and in the concrete design table I deactivate now the surface ability limit state design since currently only the ultimate limit state design is uh, carried out. You can see it here. The ultimate limit state is carried out. If you want to see the design check details, you can open uh, this dialog to check this. I would now like to show you how you can model a reinforced bridge cross section in our section and then import this cross section into RFM. The bridge cross section is in DXF format, so you can use the DXF import. I import the DXF file via file import DXF, then I choose the corresponding DXF file, and here I choose the option create DXF template for further editing. The lines are then imported into the model as lines. In the base data, I activate the concrete reinforcement because I want to define a reinforcement. And in the reinforcement settings, I define a cover, concrete cover of uh, 50 millimeter. First, I create the part. For this, I use the function select boundary. And for the part, I have to define a material. Um, this should be a C37. Uh, th and then I have to click on the line. Then I look into the materials and I see here the B. 550S materials also included, um, but I need a different material, so therefore I go into the library and I choose here the desired material. It should be a B500S. And then I click on OK. I uh, then define steer ups. The steer ups uh, should have a diameter of uh, 14 millimeter. And I choose here the concrete cover points. I want to define stirrups also on the cantilever, but the stirrup diameter is here 12 millimeter. Also here for the other side. More stirrups are to be arranged in the rectangular cross-section. Cross For this, I still need the cover points in the corresponding places. Uh, as the stirrups are to be positioned from the concrete cover in this point, I uh, set this point um, as uh, the zero point. And I can do this in the dialog work plane and grid. Here I can select the origin mm -hmm. 
and I want to define a different grid uh, point spacing. This should be 100 millimeter in both direction and I want the number of grid points dynamically according to the size of model. Then I can create my helpline And then I can copy uh, this line uh, to the position where I want to have the uh, steer ups. Here I create a copy and the displacement vector should be uh, 747 millimeter. And the next one 448 millimeter and I want to cover uh, to want to copy them several times two times 448 plus 747 and uh, now I have my help lines I will save this cross section now. Now use the function connect lines to connect the lines with the cover line. I don't need the lines anymore, so I can delete them. And um, it's easier to select these lines if I hide the part. And uh, now the points have to be converted to another point, uh, point type. Uh, for this, I select the points. and choose here the point type online. Now I can define the steer ups. For this, I create a new steer up. Steer up diameter should be 40 millimeter. And then I pick the cover points. I then enter the lower longitudinal reinforcement. First, I place reinforcement of type single point with a bar diameter of 28 millimeter on the edges.
then I need additional bars and for this I use the definition type uh, multivariable. I need nine bars with a distance of 75 millimeter and distance from start 76 millimeter. on this position here and also on the other side then I need four bars with 79.5 millimeter And also 10 bars with 78 millimeter distance to the first point. I then define the upper reinforcement. First I place reinforcement of type single point with a diameter of 14 mm in the corners. And then bars from type multivariable should be five bars with a distance between them of 150 millimeter and from the beginning of 151 millimeter. Also here on the other side and then two bars. Here the distance is 107. And then five bars with distance 115. I 
I then define the lateral reinforcement with a diameter 40 millimeter, should be 8 bars. Distance is 150 millimeter and distance from start is 77.5 millimeter. It's from here to here and then on the other side from here to here. On the cantilevers a diameter of 20, mi 20 millimeter is arranged in each corner. So I choose here single point, 20 millimeter, and then I have to pick the corresponding point, apply it next. Here also, and then on the other side, And then I need additional reinforcement for the cantilever. On the top, this should be 9 diameter, 9 bars of diameter 10 every 100 millimeter with a distance here from the, to the start of 76 millimeter from here to here and from here to here and then I need this also on the bottom this should be 10 bars, 10 millimeter diameter and 63.5 millimeter. From here to here and from here to here. The entry of the cross section is complete, so I can save this cross section and then I can go back to Arfem. Um, I want to enter now the structure in RFRAM. To do this, I create a new file. And I call it bridge. And uh, I activate here the add-on concrete design. I now import the cross section that I have created from our section. This is this cross section. And then I can enter the structure. The bridge is 12 meter long, so I create a member with a length of 12 meter. I have to also define supports.
on the end and on the start. And in the dead weight load case, I define an additional load. This should be 100 kilonewton per meter here on this member. I uh, then open the edit member dialog again. Here, once again, a concrete cover is imported from the R section, cross section, also the longitudinal reinforcement. Here, I can make the settings that I've described in my previous example. Then, I open the concrete design table, I deactivate. the serviceability limit state designs, and then I start the calculation. As already mentioned, only the ultimate limit state is checked. Only this uh, design check is carried out for our section cross sections. Um, I want to show you now um, how you can define user defined timber cross sections in uh, our section and how you can uh, design these cross section and timber design add on. Um, for this, I open section again and here I create a new file I name it timber cross section I choose here the analysis method finite element analysis since this timber cross section is a massive cross section Then I have to define the material. I don't need the second material, so I can delete it. And here I change uh, this uh, material. This should be a C24. Material. And now I can enter the uh, cross section. Um, This uh, cross section uh, should be a pentagonal uh, cross section with a side length of uh, 140 millimeter. And for this, I create a new line with the input mode length and direction. The line length should be 140 millimeter. And I put this line into the origin. Um, to create the other lines, I use the uh, rotate function. For this, I select the line and then I choose here the function rotate. Here I activate the create copy checkbox. The number of steps should be one the rotation angle should be 108 uh, degree and uh, the point of rotation is uh, the respective line end. Then I click on apply and all I have to do is to enter the point of rotation.
Now I can create the part. I use for this the select boundary function. You have to click on a line and the cross section is now uh, complete. Um, I now check the uh, generated stress points. The stress point is here in the middle and I have here also additional stress points on the uh, lines. Um, the stresses of the cross section are calculated at stress points. Here you sh should make sure that you also have stress points at all relevant points of the cross section. For example, at the point where the maximum shear stress is. You can also set stress points manually and to do this you can um, choose here in navigator data this function new stress point and then you can define a stress point manually. Um, the cross section is now finished so I can save it and I can go back to RFM. Here I will create a new file and I name it timber column. I activate here the add-on timber design and in the standards I choose the standard group for timber. And I click on OK. The new file is created. And first I import the cross section that I've created from our section. I choose here the timber cross section and also here the material that's defined in our section is imported. Now I can create my column. The column should have a height of 4 meter. I have to also define support. Here a hinged support and an additional support on the top. And I want to define an additional load. This should be a load of 50 kN in Z direction. Then I open the edit member dialog and here on the design type, I uh, want to um, check also stability. So I have to um, define effective lengths. I want to do this now. So I create a new effective length type. I have to define the nodal supports. Here the standing um, settings match. So I click here on OK and OK. And then I go to a timber design. Um, I have to create the load combinations first so that I can now start the calculation. You can see now uh, the results and if you want to see the design check details you can open uh, this uh, dialog, dialog for all design checks. This brings me to the end of the webinar. I will now give the floor back to Andreas. 
Thank you, Sonia, for your nice presentation. I have an additional hint. Our online courses are on our website. You can find them when you click the yeah, link button here, or you can scan the QR codes. Yeah, for example, the RFM 6 Masterclass course yeah, for beginners, then the Eurocode 2 course for the reinforced concrete design, or the Eurocode 3 course for the steel design with RFM 6. Yeah, the courses take about two or three hours. You can find uh, additional information about the pricing and the content. You can stop the course anytime when you yeah, doesn't have enough time to see the full course. Yeah, and you can continue with the course uh, when you have time again. Okay, that should be also all from my side. I thank you for your attention. Thanks to Sonja for your presentation. I hope we meet each other in a future webinar. Until then, bye-bye.